Something that I think is important to keep in mind is that when we're treating someone with diuretics, we're counteracting something that the body is trying to do naturally um, with the neurohormonal response um, to whatever's going on. Um, it's responding to a stimulus. So the body is doing what it thinks it needs to to preserve itself, to preserve its um, filtration rate to the kidneys. Um, so we're trying to counteract that. And the diuretics can only do so much against the body. Uh, once we put it in, it's kind of out of our control. So right off the bat, when we use diuretics, we've got um, factors working against us because um, the body wants to um, block the mechanisms that are making the diuretics um, practical. So um, when you look at the things that the body is doing in order to preserve the fluids, um, which is what it wants to do, um, you've got the neural hormonal resistance to the diuretics. Um, such as you have like uh, angiotensin 2 is acting on um, the arterioles and endothelin, the sympathetic nervous system with norepinephrine, um, different chemicals are trying to um, decrease the filtration of different solutes because it's trying to retain water. Um, same thing with the proximal tubule, angiotensin 2 works here to try to absorb a lot of sodium. That way um, it retains a lot of water to follow the sodium. Um, aldosterone works over here in the collecting ducts um, as well to try to absorb a lot of sodium and absorb water. And so these are the things that we're trying to work against when we use diuretics. And a lot of our diuretics that we use um, work down here. So like the loop diuretics work in the loop the thiazide and the potassium spring work over here in the distal end of the two wheels and the collecting two wheels. And so um, by the time we get there, um, there might not be a lot of sodium to um, put back into the tubule because angiotensin II is already up here reabsorbing a lot of the sodium. So while these diuretics are here trying to um, secrete the sodium or keep it in the tubule to excrete and excrete more water, angiotensin II and the other hormones over here are trying really hard to um, reabsorb sodium here. So by the time the fluid in the tubule gets down to these um, action sites of the diuretics, it might already be too late for them to make a huge difference. So that's one way um, that the body can kind of um, build up a resistance to these diuretics. Um, so there's just a lot of reasons why you might want to think about um, why a diuretic isn't working for a patient. Um, one of the things we think of might be non-compliance, like they might not be taking their medication like they're supposed to, or they might not be adhering to a good low-sodium diet. Um, so one thing to do about that is just to ensure their compliance, um, try to counsel them, maybe have them speak to a dietitian or get some support so that they can um, follow that regimen. Um, another why, reason why it might not be working, um, they could have inadequate dose or frequency. And so to fix that, you can either progressively increase their dose of their diuretic or increase the frequency of taking that medication. Um, another reason why they might be work not working is because the patient might have a decreased GI absorption of it. And, um, you can help this by changing the diuretic because some of them are more bioavailable than others. Um, for instance, torsamide is um, a lot greater than furosemide for having bioavailability. Um, you also might want to bypass the GI completely and just go to IV administration so that the drug can be more available and therefore more effective. Um, you might have resistance to diuretics because um, you might have decreased secretion into the tubular, tubular lumen because, like I was saying here, these hormones and things are trying to um, decrease the filtration of solutes into the tube because it's trying to retain the solutes to retain water. So if you have a decrease of the solutes, then you're going to have decrease of the um, drugs going through the tubule, and so they never actually reach their site of action they have a site of action that they work at. So if they don't actually get there, then they're not gonna be effective. Um, that can be a compensatory mechanism um, by the body to slow the um, filtration rate in order to keep those in. Um, so 
One way to do that is blocking the RAS system, um, adding another uh, medication. Um, and then we talked about tubular adaptation can be a reason why um, somebody is resistant to a diuretic. Um, so that's why you want to try to use diuretics working at different sites. For example, um, a loop diuretic with a potassium sparing or a loop diuretic with thiazide. And that can help. Um, spironolactone is a lot of times used in combination with um, like a loop diuretic. Um, and that can help with the long-term tolerance uh, resistance to diuretics.